Welcome back to the score. Nasa Pilipinas na muli ang ASEAN Basketball League Championship matapos magwagi ang alam Pilipinas sa kanilang classic final showdown kontra sa Mono Vampire ng Thailand. Aside from imports, Ronaldo Bachman and Justin Brownlee, nag-shine din ang dating UAP MVP na si Bobby Ray Park Jr. na nanalo ng Finals MVP Award at Makakausa natin ngayong gabi si Ray Ray dito sa studio at pati na rin ang ala Pilipinas coach at si Coach Jimmy Alapag. So Jimmy, Ray, welcome to score. Congratulations again on the title. Thanks. How are you guys? Oh, it's sunk in a bit now, but but let's, let's go back to it. And it's, it's it's interesting to get the backstories and how this whole thing developed. And, and we, we can go as far back, Coach Jimmy, as when you guys decided to replace your imports and bring in Ronaldo uh, and Justin, of course. That was a big, big deal. Give us a story behind that in terms of when you and team management decided that the imports you had at the start were not enough, we're not going to get you what you wanted, and, and you knew these two were available. Um, well, Justin was the first to commit because okay. we, we, we decided to change Reggio Cosa first. Okay. Um, so initially, Young Isip Naman was to, to pair Justin with Ivan Johnson. Ah, okay. So <laughs> Justin committed. Uh, we were waiting for him to arrive, and then Ivan had uh, a checkup with the doctor okay. and found out that his injury was going to keep him out for an extended amount of time. Okay. So right away, um, I met with our coaches, uh, uh, our consultant, Danny Siegel, and we, we started to brainstorm right away because our next game was less than a week away. Mm -hmm. So it was really important. You know, it was great that we had Justin coming in, but we only had one import. Right. So Kailangan Yung Isa. So we were really scrambling till 2, 3 a.m. Um, wow. It was a Wednesday, and okay. we played the following Wednesday. And oh, my goodness. After brainstorming all night, you know, uh, Danny Siegel came up and, you know, said, hey, you know, what's, what's Ronaldo Balkman doing? It was doing? Danny's idea. And, okay. And so, you know, I said, wait, you know, I have his number. And so, <laughs> uh, Usab Naman guy, uh, Cheryl Reyes, who, mm -hmm. who's, who represents him, and uh, mm -hmm. connected with her and, wow. and decided to give Balk a call. And as soon as wow. we spoke, he said, hey, I'm, I'm coming. So, just like that, wow. uh, they were on their way. For you, you know, being the, the longest tenured Hala Pilipinas player, together with some other guys in the lower force, what was your action when you heard that these two guys were going to come in and, and, and back you guys up? Those are A1 players. Mm -hmm. they, um, NBA caliber guys. Yeah. I mean, I've never really was able to meet Justin, but, you know, I had interactions with him through mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. uh, Renato Bulkman, just him being able to have that talent and that skid during the NBA season. Yep bringing that talent to us mm -hmm. is just great. It definitely boosts up the morale of the team and it boosted us up talent-wise. For sure. Were there any concerns about Ronaldo? We know what happened in his, in his last stint in the Philippines mm -hmm. before he left. Um, yes. But were any concerns about attitude? I mean, of course, you know, maybe an outburst like that would be far-fetched. But mm -hmm. even just attitude concerns of having to coach him and having to assimilate with the team. Not at all. Because, you know, if you... if. If you take away that isolated incident, okay. I mean, he represented Puerto Rico in, in how many international right. tournaments? Yeah, and you played against him. Right? World championships, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and so forth. So, not to mention he was Finals MVP in the in the Puerto Rican League, you know, just two years ago. Okay. So, you know, that was that was really the least of my concern. Okay. Um, all I knew was that those two guys, we were going to get winners both on mm -hmm. and off the court, um, and and you could see the the dynamic of our team change mm -hmm. as soon as they arrived. When you needed to start to blend with them, Ray, what was it like for you? It was in the leader of this team as well, and you had these two, as you said, very accomplished imports, NBA experience guys, you know, A1 imports, but what was it like uh, eventually after the first two games blending in with them and trying to find that rhythm? Well, they, they really did a great job of just helping me find my rhythm. Okay. And the coaches continue to just tell me, encourage me to be aggressive mm -hmm. and play your game and just learning from great talent like mm -hmm. that. Um, they're not ball dominant. They love to share the ball, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, they love to win. It right. doesn't yeah. matter who scores the most points yeah. or who has the better stats. At the end of the day, a win is a win, mm -hmm. and that's what they were trying to accomplish. So it made everything much easier. That's an interesting point, Coach Jimmy, that, that Ray brings up. They, they weren't that ball dominant. And we've seen imports in the past in, in the PBA who, how they can be ball Absolutely. hogs and ball dominant. And yet these two guys, as, as Ray said, they really trusted the, the locals. They really wanted, the, you know, everybody involved. And the way they even passed each other, sometimes it's mind-boggling <laughs> yeah. how they know where the other one is, right? Yeah, sure. Talk about that a bit and how their unselfishness was so key also, as well. Well, I think, you know, any time you, you, you have a team that, that has two imports that are going to play a lot of minutes, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be important that they kind of set the bar for the team yeah. and it allows Ray and, and our other guys to kind of fill in. Um, and again, you know, you're talking about two guys who, on top of their, their NBA experience, they're winners. Mm -hmm. and, and that selflessness and, and that camaraderie and chemistry that they brought 
together with our team um, really set us off. And uh, you can really sense from the guys that there was a different confidence. And, and, and again, it seemed like the, the, the chemistry was much more natural um, right when they came in. Tell us a bit about how you helped Ray adjust as well, because I think towards the latter part of the regular season and even the playoffs, that's when his game really started to pick up mm. and he got his rhythm. Uh, what was happening behind the scenes with you and the coaching staff in trying to get the real, you know, the real Ray Ray back in there and get him more, you know, aggressive, as he would say? Well, I think you know, as as a first year head coach, you know, he was already MVP last year, okay. and, and and you know, you you almost go into the season not trying to ruin that and and yep. and. You know, have him win it again if, mm -hmm. if possible. But um, you know, even though even though Ray got off to a little bit of a slow start at the start of the season, I mean, I think collectively us as a team we started slow because they again the, yes. the change of the imports and, and and guys getting adjusted to our new system. Mm -hmm. um, we know it's going to take some time, but mm -hmm. we just encourage Ray to keep working because hey, he's mm -hmm. he's always one of the first guys in the gym, always one of the last to leave. And anytime you have a player as talented as he is with that work ethic, mm -hmm. things. Things will, will will find your way, and I told I told Ray, hey, just be patient, but you know, don't stop working. And and he, you know, to his credit, he stayed with it, and I think he was able to reap all the rewards of of his hard work as the season progressed. What was going through your mind, Ray, when you went through that slow start? The team was going through a slow start. I know you're very competitive. You know, in yourself, you demand so much out of yourself, and yet you want the team to improve as well. How was that balance, and what was it like going through those that stretch of a couple of weeks before you started to get your rhythm? At the end of the day, um, mm -hmm. it's just tough losing games mm -hmm. and then waiting a week yeah. to or, try and get or, it or back. Two. Yeah. Or two. A week or two. Try to get, wait sometimes two weeks, yeah. A week or two, yeah. try to just, you know, play another game mm -hmm. and try to make it up. Yeah. And yeah. it was really frustrating during those, time, mm -hmm. during those times because we would practice, we'd go right. hard, right. and everybody was still in that adjustment phase, yeah. to be honest. Everybody was new. Coach Jimmy was just starting off as a head coach. We were trying to adjust to Coach Jimmy. Yeah. And everybody's still trying to blend with one another. We had, but the thing is, we had a great group of guys. Coach mm -hmm. Jimmy did a great job of getting guys that just wants to work mm -hmm. and wants to win. Yeah. And of course, as all competitors, frustrating is it's frustrating to lose. Mm -hmm. So that was the rough part of it. And you know, bringing in those guys like Justin Brownlee and Renato Bokman, it changed really the morale of the team and changed the attitude. At what point of the season, Coach Jimmy, did you guys start to see the potential and believe that this team can actually take it all the way? Because, I mean, on paper, you're looking at other teams that are arguably stronger, mm -hmm. have been together longer, yeah. have had a system that's in place longer, like the, the, the Hong Kong team, the Chinese team, right? Mm -hmm. At what point did you guys say, hey, you know what, I think we can take this all the way? I knew we would have a chance to be there in the end, right from the first game. Right away. Because, uh, again, starting the season, we only played three games the first two months. <laughs> right. And, and like Ray was saying, that was the difficult part. Yeah. You know, when you lose and then you wait two weeks yeah. and then you lose again. <laughs> and then you wait another, and then you wait another two weeks <laughs> yeah. and you lose again. You know, we're, we're sitting dead last in the ABL yeah. and teams are 4 0, 5 0, 6 0. So, you know, we were getting left behind. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Justin and, and Bulk, they arrived. Wednesday morning, we played Malaysia Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. oh, and goodness. Justin goes for 29, whatever. Assists and rebounds. Balk has almost a 20-20 game, and Ray and everybody else played well. And again, you could just see the the natural chemistry building right mm -hmm. right from from day one. Awesome. There was a key key stretch as well, Ray, when a bunch of your teammates got injured and other guys had a chance to step up. And uh, sometimes that's how it works in basketball. You have an opportunity to step up, see what you you can do, and and, con and contribute. Like Pau Pau, Bamboy, and them. Talk, talk about that and how you saw these younger guys, your younger teammates. Take that opportunity and step up and, and, and provide big time minutes in the end. See, the thing about Coach Jimmy is he trusted each and everybody that was in that lineup. Okay. And he mm -hmm. knew there was going to be a time that we would need everybody mm -hmm. and for people to s step up. Yep. And guys continued to work towards that. And right. they, didn't make, they didn't feel bad about any minutes. Mm -hmm. It's really a team that was very genuine and sticking to Coach Jimmy's philosophy mm -hmm. that we will need everybody. Right. And Coach Jimmy did a great job of really portraying that with us. He made sure that everybody was ready. Mm -hmm. And he, he did let it be known that we have the deepest bench. Right. And the bench is going to be key for us. Because, yes. you know, it's a long stretch of the season. Mm -hmm. You never know who makes shots that night, who miss shots, mm -hmm. God forbid, injuries. Mm -hmm. 
and a credit to them. They <clears> continue <throat> to work yeah. and continue to be ready when the jersey is called upon. Yeah. And, and talk about that, Coach, we, from your perspective. Grab a young confidence in our guys like Bao Bao, Bamboy. When you put them in, they're like, I'm not afraid. I'm going to play my game and take my shots when, when needed. What was that like to see them perform that way? Uh, I think, you know, it, it, it was tough, especially early on, because you're playing a 40 minute game. Mm -hmm. And that's that's different from a forty eight minute of game. Course, because what you're used to, yeah. Because so so many things can happen in that yeah. eight minutes. Right. Um, yeah. and especially when it comes to rotation, now li now minutes become very limited. Yeah. And to start the season, you know, Josh Urbastando was playing great for us. Yep. I mean he was really one of our most consistent local guys. Um, but again, I just tried to encourage the guys that hey, we will need everybody at some point yeah. if we're gonna make a run to the end. Mm -hmm. And and you know, because I've 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 seen it happen. You mm -hmm. know, I've seen it happen, you know, so many times, yeah. especially for team for, for teams that make championship right. runs. And right. so, you know, we didn't anticipate um, losing Rico. We didn't anticipate, you know, losing Josh there, you know, towards the end of the elimination then mm -hmm. Like you said, that injury provided minutes for, for Pau and, and, and Pomboy to step in. Mm -hmm. And to their credit, you know, they would come in every day. They wouldn't complain and and, and I try to communicate that with them that mm -hmm. hey Please, you guys, just be patient with me. Keep working. Keep mm -hmm. keep coming early. Keep staying late, and you'll get your opportunity. Mm -hmm. And and it was great to see both those guys get those extra minutes and and really play great for us. Let's look back at the series, the finals. Um, when you faced Mono, <clears throat> if I if I get this right, they did never they never played you with these imports that you had, and you mm -hmm. never played them as well with those two imports that they had. Because they were also replacements, said so the Guara and the Singletary. We played them early uh, in the season right. when. Uh, Deguar and Singletary had just arrived. Just arrived, okay, okay. So, but they did not see your two imports. They, the they, 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 they did they, as well. Yeah, okay. They, they so what was it like? But what were your expectations for the finals? Because they were, they, both of you were underdogs in the semis, both of the lower seeds, right? Both three and four, right? And yet they beat the top seed with the confidence they had what they were rolling with. What were your thoughts coming in the series? Um, well, you know, four guys really stood out to us. One, Brickman, mm -hmm. uh, Jason Brickman. Um, you know, I told the guys he's one of the smartest porn guys that I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, for a guy who's not very big like myself, you know, isn't doesn't blow you away with his athleticism, mm -hmm. but again, just his basketball IQ yeah. and the way he passed the ball and the way he reads the game is is really off the chart. So that was a big concern for us. Um, and then when the other team has a seven-five import, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's. There's a lot of sleepless nights um, trying to prepare for that, and, mm -hmm. and of course Mike Singletary, who's a former PBA import, mm -hmm. um, and we could see his play steadily improve as the season progressed. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Paul Zamar. Um, I was impressed with him from early in the season. He was just really consistent, uh, shot the ball really well the, the entire ABL season. So, um, you know, those guys were concerned, and, and we knew that they were playing with a lot of confidence, considering they beat the number one seed. Um, so. I told the guys we have to be ready. For you, Ray, mentally, how did you prepare for this, for these playoffs, for the finals? Because last year you didn't make a long run, obviously, and this is your first significant stretch of playoff games. I mean, even in the UAP, you know, make you the finals here in Taiminio. What was it like? How were you preparing yourself for this stretch, knowing that you had to step up and you eventually did? Well, first of all, the coaches and the whole coaching staff, Coach Happy did a great job of just keeping everybody healthy okay. and fresh mm -hmm. going towards the playoff. Uh, Coach Jimmy did a great job of limiting us and figuring out how the rotation should be mm -hmm. without still, you know, hindering us, um, just cutting off crazy minutes. And just the stretch of the playoffs, um, I've been excited to play in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And Coach Jimmy instilled in me that it's these moments that you won't forget. And I really wanted to make that impact. You know, I felt like there was a lot on my shoulders mm -hmm. with what happened with my dad throughout the years that I wasn't able to play mm -hmm. the playoffs. And I just felt that God gave this team this moment and it allowed everybody to blossom. Mm -hmm. Everybody played well yep. from the starters all the way to the bench. The coach did a great job. So I felt like it was God's will to just for us to seize this moment and to take what is ours because it's us, we've been working so hard for it, mm -hmm. even the off-season where we had like four or five guys on the roster, and wow. we were still working out. Yeah. <laughs> so and There was a one big game in Thailand, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, game three, where and you really carried the team offensively when the, uh, when the imports had, you know, a quote-unquote an off night. What was that like when you had to, you know, uh, do the heavy lifting, so to speak, and, and help the team still get that win? Well, at the end of the day, um, it's still my teammates looking for me mm -hmm. and continuing to push me to get better. And mm -hmm. they told me, Ray, just you're making your shots, continue to be aggressive. And they did a great job of looking for me. And Coach Jimmy put me in a great position to 
lead and try to score and to help out in any way possible, whether it may be defense or offense. And it happened a couple of times throughout the season where we had to play the number one team early in the season, a couple of times in the playoffs. And that's the beauty about just this team, this family that we have, that we're so genuine that nobody really cares who scored the most points. And it's a testament to Coach Jimmy, because we are an extension of him. The unselfishness is ridiculous, to be honest, from Renato Balkman and Justin Brownlee. And we really just complement each other in a way to we all we care about is just getting a win at the end of the day. Yeah. Doesn't well, matter. Before Doesn't I matter. ask yeah. coaching the last thing, I want to ask you, of course, your fans are <laughs> eager to find out what's next. <laughs> but actually, you can say that. What's next? What's next for your parks? What are your options? What are you looking at? Uh, to be honest, the PBA is a prestigious league and the ABL is definitely growing. Mm -hmm. So I have those options right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I was offered in Thailand also, but decided to decline and stay here, okay. to stay more relevant and to be under Coach Jimmy's mentorship at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, my next step right now would really depend on my mentors, Coach Jimmy, Coach Danny Siegel, mm -hmm. and Boss Charlie D, okay. and Sir Hansi. Mm -hmm. So within the next few days, next few weeks, we try to figure out what's the next move. All right, and Coach Jimmy, for you, I want to ask you, the fans, I think, were crazier this year for Ala Pilipinas. And how was that a big factor for you guys? Playing your home games, the local support was just it was nuts. I mean, it reminded me of Gila's games, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they had that vibe. They, they loved the team because you're, you represented the Philippines mm -hmm. in, in the ASEAN region. It was, you know, it was an incredible, incredible experience, you know, to, to, to have this opportunity as my first mm -hmm. head coaching job. Um, you know, we have the best fans in the world. And, and not only here at home, but got guy sign that we would travel throughout the, the ABL, mm -hmm. you know, in Thailand or, or you know, Saigon or Singapore, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, every stop that we went, we could feel the support. Yeah, and and that's, that's yeah. a great feeling. <clears throat> um, it's a great feeling as a coach and, and, and probably an even better feeling for our players because they, they feel the, the love and the support yeah. um, for the team. So, um, you know, I'm just proud of our guys. You know, it was, it was a heck of a season. You know, proud to see the, the growth of, of all of our guys, especially this guy right next to me. Um, seeing his maturation as a player, both on and off the court, I think I think that's important as he as he moves on with his career. Um, so, you know, I'm excited to see what what's next for him, and and you know, looking forward to next season. Awesome. Well, I think yeah, at, at this point, I want to give you a chance to thank all the fans and your message from Ala Filipinas. They're so thankful that you brought back the ABL title to the Philippines, but they were a huge factor. In, give your thanks. Uh, to lot yung mga kaalab, I uh, just want to thank you guys for all your support this season. Uh, you know, can't thank you guys enough for all the love and the support. Um, wherever we travel, throughout the ABL, here at home in Davao, and Baliwag, and, and of course Santa Rosa, um, we appreciate the support. Uh, we love you guys and, and so thankful and blessed that we could bring the, the ABL championship back home. And it was such a pleasure to witness all that, to see the ride you guys are on. And thank you for bringing us so much pride and bringing that ABL title back to the season. Congrats again, Ray. Push you, Salama. Thank you. For more sports updates, keep watching The Score. And don't forget to subscribe.